Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to learn how to play the King's Indian Defense opening with the black pieces and it is a very strong and an aggressive opening to play against 1d4. This opening has been played from the beginner to the master levels. So till the end of the video you are going to master, like by the end of the video you are going to master everything about the King's Indian Defense opening and you are going to have an overview of the complete opening. So I don't want to waste any further time so let's start. So white starts with 1d4 and we reply with knight to f6. We have c4 and now we play the move g6. Knight to c3. Our opponent is expecting us to play the d5, the Grunfeld, which is also a very interesting opening, but we go for the move bishop to g7, which is known as the king's Indian defense. e4 and now we have d6. What's the idea of d6? So basically after e4, white's idea is to play e5. So generally the moment white plays e4, we play the move d6 to stop white's e5. And now there are already many ways for white to continue the position. There is knight to f3, there is h3, there is f4 and there is also the move um, f3. So there are mainly four moves to continue the position. So first let's start by what happens if white plays knight to f3. So after knight f3, white simply focuses on developing his pieces, we simply short castle and this is the main position. This is the like chill here, every move black is going to play remains the same. After short castle, now like for example if white plays bishop d3, developing the bishop normally. This move is already a bit inaccurate because like what are the ways for black to continue the position. Just giving you an overview idea. So generally white black not develop uh, finishes his development by developing the bishop to g4 developing his knight to c6 getting some side uh, some sort of an e5 break having this open e5 opening up this bishop and this is the way black continues the position so after bishop d3 we play the move bishop g4 white attacks the bishop like white have to attack the bishop now or maybe later but white, white will definitely do so we take the knight and now we play the move knight to c6, finishing our development. And after knight c6, we attack the d4 pawn. So for example, like white has two ways, white, white can push the pawn or white can defend the pawn via bishop e3. If white plays bishop e3, we can already play knight to d7. What's the idea? We put more pressure on the pawn on d4. And now, for example, if white tries to play d5, we can already play knight e5, take on d3 and play c6. Black is having a very solid position with a very strong bishop on g7 and the idea is queen f5 now having this annoying pin and black is at least very comfortable in this position. So for example if white tries to play knight to defending the pawn, so now black is having already a very strong move winning move which is to play knight to e5 attacking the queen and the bishop and here after takes takes black is a piece down but you have to move the queen. And now we can capture the bishop, give a check, capture another pawn. Black would be two pawns up with a completely winning position. So this is the whole idea of how to play if your opponent plays bishop e3. And now going back a bit, at the place of bishop e3, if white plays the move d5, pushing up the pawn, now black is having options. White can play the, black can play the move knight d4, cementing the knight, attacking the queen. And after the queen moves back, maybe to d1. Black can play e5 or even c5, both the moves are pretty pretty comfortable for black. This is one way or you can also go for, the, for an easy approach with knight e5 with taking the bishop, playing the move knight d7 with the idea of c6, queen f5 and this is once again a very fine position to play with the black pieces. So this is exactly what happens if your opponent plays d5. Now going back a bit and understanding what happens if at the place of bishop d3, your opponent goes for playing the move bishop e2, which is the main move. Now white is defending the pawn. And now we play the move bishop g4 once again, attacking the knight, removing the defender, short castle. And now we have knight f to d7, a very interesting move, opening up the bishop, not committing the, not developing the b8 knight first, but first pulling the knight back. And now after h3, which white will play eventually, we take the knight and now play the move knight to c6, attacking the d4 pawn. Bishop e3, kind of a fine move to protect the pawn. If you push the pawn, black can easily install the knight on e5 or even d4 
and black is pretty happy. So bishop e3 and now we can play the move e5, the general idea of black. It looks like why black is blocking the bl blocking his own bishop. But in order to get the pawn from the d4 square, you have to break in the center via e5. And if white allows black to take on d4, black would be having this strong bishop, rook on e8, open e-file, and black is absolutely having no problems. So white will try to push, and now we can already play knight to d4. Knight e7 looks a pretty natural move, but knight d4 is simply a strong move. The idea is pretty simple. Now the knight is first of all very well placed on d4. And if you take over here and play knight e2, threatening to take over here, now black is having many options. Black can play queen f6, defend the pawn, or black can even go for pushing up the pawn to d3. You have to take and now just bishop into pawn, and it looks like black just lost a pawn. But after knight c5, we are winning an exchange and the game. And even if we were not winning an, ex an exchange, but you can still realize that how strong this position is. Like black's all pieces have been perfectly placed. Despite being a pawn down, black is having absolutely no problems. So yeah, this is how you play if your opponent plays bishop to e2. So now let's going back a bit and trying to understand what happens if your opponent first plays h3, stopping your idea with bishop g4. Now after h3, you still do the short castle thing, bishop e3, and now you develop the knight to c6, keeping the flexibility with the bishop because you are not really sure where the bishop deserves to be. And now we have knight f3, and now we strike with the in the center via e5, once again striking in the center. And here, if black if white allows black to take, black is having a very present position, so you have to push. If you take the pawn, black is having no, no problems with d takes e5 uh, and black is having a pretty comfortable position because whenever white puts the knight to d5, we can always play c6, attack the knight. But we are the lucky one who can put the knight to d4 because white really can't attack the knight with either of the pawn because the pawn are on e4 and c4. So knight d4 is a very interesting move and a good move to be played from the black side from the, in the future. So. Okay, coming to the main move, after e5, white pushes the pawn to d5, and now once again we install the knight in the center via knight d4. And it looks like black just blundered a pawn. But guys, here we are already having very strong tactics because opponent's king is still in the center, so we are having the move knight into e4, a very strong move in this position. First of all, if white takes on e4, we are having a very strong move, which is queen h4, a very interesting idea of attacking the knight and the bishop. If you move the knight, the bishop is hanging. So you are not really having much. Bishop g7. And now instead of capturing the bishop first, we take on e4 first with a check. Queen e2 is pretty easy for black to take everything and black is having absolutely no problems. Easily, like it's an equal position. With, uh, which is a very good result for black. Uh, and okay. After, at the place of queen e2, if your opponent plays bishop e2, at the place of capturing the bishop, you can first take the pawn, attack the rook, the rook have to move, and now you can capture the bishop, and black is already having a better position because of a pawn pawn, pawn, pawn up. So this is exactly what happens if your opponent takes on e4. If your opponent takes on g7 with the bishop, now at the place of capturing the bishop, you first play the move rook e8, a very strong move. Uh, like taking the advantage of white's weak king in the center. Now, for example, if the bishop moved, we are already having knight c3 check and white loses the queen. So in this position after rook e8, like uh, white has to play something like bishop e2. Now we can take the bishop. Check is met with queen f6. You are not really hanging material. Takes takes and this position is very fine for black. I would say in general, in showing it's an even position, but black is much better practically because Black King is much more activated, Bishop d7, Rook e8, and you can already realize how Black is having much more better chances of winning the game compared to White. So this is exactly how you play if your opponent plays like Bishop g7. Now going back a bit, that's exactly what happens if your opponent plays h3. Now going back a bit and understanding what happens if your opponent plays f3 in this position, which is also known as the Semish variation under the King's Indian. After f3, your opponent permanently stops bishop g4 idea. And now we short castle once again. Bishop e3. 
and now we play the move e5 attacking in the center d5 and now we play the move a5 what's the idea like in this position white's idea is to play queen e2 long castle and launch an attack on the king side and as we know white is going to long castle in the future so we are already taking actions according to it by pushing the pawn to a5 generating some heavy play on the queen side queen d2 and now we have knight a6 so the idea is to put the knight to c5 so that white can never play b4 attack the knight on c5 so after knight a6 for example if white plays bishop h6 the idea is to play h4 h5 and if you are not really sure how to continue with black you are simply going to get crushed but after bishop h6 is already in a big error in the position because white black is having a very strong move which is to play knight into e4 capturing the pawn attacking the queen you have to capture the knight back and now you are having this very sneaky tactic with queen h4 check and you are lose you you are basically losing the bishop in this position takes and now in in this position black is a pawn up with a very healthy position absolutely no problem so this is exactly what happens if um, if your opponent plays bishop to h6 in this position but if your opponent goes for the main move which is to do long castle now we can already play knight to d7 because we realize white wants to generate play on the king side so now we are transporting our pieces from the king side to the queen side knight d7 knight c5 and now we are breaking the position with f5 a very strong move to be played opening up the f file takes 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 this is the best way white should play and after bishop takes you can already realize black's pieces are pretty nicely placed up the black king's black king is a bit weak though you you need like you need to analyze this position in a bit more detail to understand what's happening in this position and this position is definitely playable for black if you analyze it in a great detail so this is what exactly what happens if your opponent plays f3 the semis semis variation not discussing the final move which what happens if your opponent plays the four pawn attack which is uh pushing the pawn to f4 now after f4 we play the move sh uh, short castle knight to f3 and now we play the move knight to a6 it looks like why are we playing the move knight to a6 developing the knight at the side of the board the idea is pretty simple of knight a6 the idea here is whenever white pushes the pawn to d5 we are having a very nice square for the knight to sit on c5 so after knight a6 bishop e2 and now we already play the move e5 striking in the center and here after takes takes it looks like like is black losing a pawn so first of all if you take with the d pawn it's already bad after takes takes knight g4 you are you're going to lose this pawn after rook e8 if white defends the pawn and eventually once the e5 pawn is gone your e4 pawn c4 pawn all the pawns are weaked and black is already having a better position so you have to take with the knight if you want to take and after knight takes e5 now we can already play a very strong move which is to play the move c5 now the c5 idea is pretty clear you are striking in the center and after c5 if white pushes the pawn to d5 if you take black white pawn structure is horrible so you have to push the pawn to d5 and now we have a knight into e4 capturing the pawn on e4 and after knight e4 like the this was the whole idea of pushing the pawn to c5 d5 and now the knight is undefended so you can already capture on e4 and now after knight e4 you have to take over here bishop into e5 and it looks like after short castle is white fine in this position after short castle black can play the move queen to h4 in this position attacking the knight and the pawn and this position is already better for black after knight g3 you can just play the move f5 in this position with the perfect position if you take on g3 it is not the best way to play because after takes takes bishop f4 white is having the lead in development but you can just play f5 with a very good position with f4 coming in and black absolutely have no problem so after d into e5 if at the place of capturing the pawn with the knight if your opponent pushes the pawn to d5 in this position you can already put your knight to c5 and after knight c5 if your op opponent plays queen c2 defending this pawn it's already a bad move after knight into e4 you have to take and now we have bishop f5 and white is losing material because you can't take the knight because the queen is hanging knight f6 is not really working because the bishop is protected uh so if your opponent plays bishop d3 you can take over here and play f5 and after bishop goes back e4 is just winning the game you are you are just crushing this position so 
Oh, I'd have to take on f5, but after rook f5, short castle. e4 is a strong move. Knight d2 protecting the rook. Bishop check, king goes back, queen f6. And this position is completely losing for white. Because as you can see, white's all pieces are like, like not a single piece have been developed. Whereas black is having the perfect position thanks to the pawn on e4, which is going to become the queen now. And white is at the verge of getting checkmated. So this is basically a completely winning position. So that's exactly what happens if your opponent plays d5. If after knight c5 at the place of queen c2, if your opponent goes for the best reply, which is bishop to g5, pinning up the knight, you can play the move h6, takes takes, and if after short castle, you can play a5, stopping white's b4 idea. And now the knight is perfectly placed over here. So after queen d2 attacking the pawn, bishop g7, rook f2, idea is to double up on the f file, black can play f5. So this is the idea of black, general idea of how to play this position with the black pieces. You After f5, you are having a very strong position. You can maybe take over here. You can maybe push the pawn, launch an attack on the king side. So black is having multiple ways to play in this position. So generally, black plays aggressively in this position, which many players like to play in the, in the game of chess. So guys, yeah, so now you are fully prepared and you have got the complete overview of how to play the King's Indian Defense opening with the black pieces. So guys, if you learned anything new from this video, make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel. Make sure to tell me in the comment box below which type of video you want next, which type of opening, which type of middle game or end game I'm going to come up with that particular video on. So thank you for watching and I'm going to see you soon. So bye bye.